Yeah, actually, uh, I'm not with Emory, although old enough to be at Emory. Uh, actually, I'm in private practice gastroenterology with uh, DCAP Gastroenterology Associates. I left the practice in uh, Florida after being there for 20 years. Came here to um, Atlanta and I'm now a partner with the uh, five person GI group. Um, we really, uh, I think I got a big pay raise when all the kids get out of college. <laughs> You know, Emory, Wash U, and uh, oh, yeah. they really know <laughs> put a dent you know, in everything. But uh, we, we are so glad that they turn out. Uh, let me just ask the parents a question. How many of you, you can be brave and raise your hand, how many of you want your child or children to go into medicine? medicine? <laughs> no one? Only two? Now come on, Chinese? Three? <laughs> Four, five, come on. <laughs> How about engineering? <laughs> Parents only. <laughs> engineering? <laughs> Law? <laughs> um, business? <gasps> okay. Now there's a question. Uh, liberal arts, uh, say art, music, any? Parents would like the kids going there? My Chinese parents. Now, these are all Asian here. <laughs> it's a very typical Asian group because only about 20% raise their hand and say medicine. Uh, how about kids? I mean, I should say, how about the youngsters, the students? How many of you would like to go into medicine, dental school? Okay. Engineering. Uh, music, sports. And play for the Atlanta Braves. And, okay, uh, music, art. Okay, now parents pay attention. Okay, I hope when you raise your hand, your kid also raise the hand too about the same area. Okay, because sometimes what you want for them may not be what they want. So it's very important to communicate, to discover what their gifts are, what their interests are, um, and sometimes. Also, what they want may not be what they turn out to be. Uh, I, you know, they have seen me working as a physician. I must have done something good or whatever because all three of them wanted to be doctors. So they did fairly well in, in high school and they often went to pre-med. But as my wife just shared with you, none of them are in medicine right now. So no matter what they had wanted may not turn out to be uh, what they become later on. I never push them into any field. I never push them into medicine. Even though I'm in medicine, I enjoy it tremendously. But I never push them, but they all wanted to go to medicine. But somehow they found out that medicine is not for them. Uh, but one thing, if you were thinking about professional track, they have to have that desire. A little masochistic self, you know, want to study, 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 and do all the extracurriculars, whatever, to free up extra time when they really needed more time. Um, I think there'll be more chance for uh, questions and answers later on. But I think just a few points um, I want to make. Uh, as far as getting ready, I mean, you can read all this by reading any college pamphlets, but hopefully I can add a little personal touch to them. Uh, start getting them ready by eighth grade because the school start looking at grades from ninth grade up. Okay? Curriculum. Got to be competitive. You want them to take a competitive curriculum. If the school offers honors or AP and your child has the ability, take them. But don't force them because a low grade in AP really doesn't help. You better to have an A in regular class than a 2 or a you know, lower in AP. Um, and then if your school does not offer AP, you need to let the school you're applying to know that your school doesn't offer that. Uh, but if they're in Georgia, you know, the school would know about your school. The college would know about your school. And the other one is standardized testing, SAT, ACT. And each school has different requirements. Uh, so you need to find out. And a lot of things you can just f go to the website and find out. Uh, and and the, I think I would put a lot of uh, emphasis for the students to find out themselves. Uh, GPA, and then find out from school the average GPA of the incoming freshman class 
to see if you fit in that. Um, I think a couple of years, several years ago, Emory's average GPA was uh, 3.78 out of 4 system. And you probably think about letters of recommendation. Usually the guidance counselor would uh, write it, but if it's a big school, the guidance counselor may not know your child well. So you may want to ask another teacher who knows your child well, and uh, including his work habit, uh, his um, uh, academics, or his ethics in classroom, and how he interacts with other students, to write that letter. Um, we talk about the essay. It's very important to invest time to start writing. And it's good to know, I think Professor Lee mentioned earlier, they all usually ask you these few questions. Start thinking about those. I mean, if your mind comes to a blank as writing what is the most uh, exciting experience in your life, uh, you can't think of anything, then it's too late to start experiencing something when you only have a few months to write. <laughs> so it's very good to start thinking about, you know, from those questions that, you know, not to just do it in an artificial manner, but to dovetail everything into the application process. For instance, in your extracurricular activity, it's also too late to start it in your senior year, right? But if you promote something, not just, I'm, I'm just part of this club, part of that club, but what do you do with it? What do you, how do you spend your time? Oh, I, I play piano for five years. Well, what do you do with that piano lesson? Um, to give you an example, my son, all my three children play piano. Uh, in, in, uh, in school, and they had maybe nine, ten years of it. Uh, my oldest son loves it, and we had to force him initially to practice. But once he hit that uh, classical music, you cannot make him stop. He would just go on his own to practice. But you know, when you were brim hall or whatever, this dum dum dum, he had no interest at all. So he discovered that he enjoyed music, and he would just go on practicing. And we found out that he can use his piano skill to make some kind of experience for himself and also to spend time wisely to ben benefit other people. So on weekends, he would go to nursing home and play piano for the residents there. And they all love him. And uh, they are older people. They like to interact with young people. And every day, them love him except one resident. I go with him. And she said, kill him! <laughs> she had a little bit dementia. But anyways, it makes a very good experience for him for four years. He would go to nursing home every other or every Saturday weekend just to play a couple hours for them. And it has become a very nice focal point for him to write about his college experience and what he see, uh, how he saw uh, his experience being able to, to see what's going on with the residents. And it was a very touching essay as he read about himself, how he uh, spent his time there. So think about some of the endpoints and start cultivating the, the uh, skills and the experience. The grades got to start early, the extracurricular activity got to start early, but don't try to be in everything. Like we kind of selected one sport for each child uh, or a, just a couple extracurricular activities but make them go with it. Like my daughter would be in tennis. I'll be, you know, weekends I'll be driving all over Florida for her to play junior tournament, and she did real well with it. And she also liked to play volleyball, and I said, no, just, just stick with tennis. And indeed, she did very well with tennis. And my Christopher, he loves piano, so I said, do piano. Andrew loves um, uh, basketball, so he got involved in basketball. Even though we discouraged him, I said, have you seen any Chinese professional basketball player? <laughs> well, that was before Yao Ming. <laughs> um, but you know, but he, he, he loved it. And so it was a very good sport for him. And he enjoyed the camaraderie with it. Um, so go deep, not just for the breadth of it. Um, and um, 